Imagine a volcano dormant for over 460 years, suddenly awakened by a devastating magnitude 8.8 .8 earthquake. The crash in Inikov, located in the remote Kamchatka Peninsula in Russia, has come back to life, spewing ash and mystery. Let's dive into this historic event that's shaking the planet. The Kamchatka Peninsula in Russia's Far East is known as the Land of Fire and Ice. In this wild region, the Krasheninikov volcano, dormant for over 460 years, has roared back to life. The event that triggered its awakening was a magnitude 8.8 .8 earthquake on July 30th, 2025. One of the most powerful quakes ever recorded, it rocked the region and reactivated the volcano, stunning scientists and locals. Krasheninikov is a volcano made up of two main cones located within an 8 mile, 13 kilometer wide caldera. This caldera was formed approximately 24,600 miles, 39,600 kilometers, ago after a catastrophic eruption that released about 12 cubic miles, 50 cubic kilometers, of volcanic material. Since then, the volcano had remained quiet, with only sporadic fumarole activity reported in 1963, 1964, and 1980. The recent quake not only reawakened Krasheninikov, but also emphasized Kamchatka's unique position on the Pacific Ring of Fire, a region famous for intense seismic and volcanic activity. The tremor, just 12 miles, 20 kilometers deep, released colossal energy, enough to disrupt the delicate balance keeping the volcano inactive. The eruption that followed launched an ash plume reaching 3 to 4 miles, 5 to 6 kilometers, into the sky. Although the volcanic activity didn't cause loss of life, it raised concern in nearby communities. The city of Petropavlovsk Kamchatsky, about 100 miles 160 kilometers, from the volcano, felt the shaking and is now monitoring the situation closely. Local authorities issued aviation alerts due to the ash cloud, which poses risks to aircraft. Scientists are intrigued by Krasheninikov's reactivation as there are no historical records of its eruptions. Geological evidence points to at least 31 eruptions in the past 10,000 years, but none in modern times. This event presents a rare opportunity to study how powerful earthquakes can trigger eruptions in volcanoes once considered extinct. The awakening of Krasheninikov also rekindles fascination with Kamchatka's unpredictable nature. Home to around 300 volcanoes, 29 of which are active, this region continues to astonish. It's a stark reminder of Earth's raw power and the importance of being prepared for extreme natural events. The July 30th, 2025 earthquake in Kamchatka was among the most intense ever recorded, tying for the sixth strongest in history. With its epicenter 74 miles, 119 kilometers, from Petropavlovsk, Kamchatsky, the quake caused moderate building damage and a few injuries, but thankfully only one fatality. The eight. Eight magnitude tremor generated a tsunami that struck Kamchatka's coast with waves up to 13 feet, four meters high. The connection between the earthquake and Krasheninikov's eruption is of major scientific interest. While the volcano had shown signs of unrest in the preceding weeks, such as lava buildup in its crater, the quake appears to have been the final trigger. The quake's energy likely fractured rocks inside the volcano, allowing magma to rise. Beyond Kamchatka, the quake triggered tsunami alerts across the Pacific, including in Hawaii, Japan, Chile, and French Polynesia. In Japan, waves up to 4 feet 3 inches, 1.3 meters, struck Hokkaido, while Hawaii recorded waves up to 5 feet 7 inches, 1.7 meters. Most alerts were lifted within hours, and damage was minimal. In Severokorilsk, on the Kuril Islands, the tsunami caused significant flooding, damaging roads, homes, and port facilities. Nonetheless, Russian authorities were praised for their preparedness. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov highlighted the resilience of infrastructure and the efficiency of alert systems, which helped prevent a greater loss of life. Aftershocks have continued, with at least 35 quakes above magnitude 5.0 recorded in the following hours. Experts warn that aftershocks may last for weeks or even months, albeit with decreasing intensity. The region remains under maximum alert. The quake's impact extends beyond physical damage. It has reignited debates on the need for earthquake-resistant infrastructure in regions like Kamchatka, which lies atop the subduction zone between the Pacific and Okhotsk plates. This tectonic interaction is responsible for the area's high frequency of quakes and eruptions. Krasheninikov is a complex volcano composed of two main stratovolcano cones. 
The southern cone stands at 6,095 feet, 1,857 meters, and the northern cone at 5,774 feet, 1,760 meters. Both sit within the same 8-mile, 13-kilometer wide caldera, a geological scar left by a massive eruption thousands of years ago. Its geological history reveals at least 31 eruptions in the past 10 millennia, many marked by deposits of tephra, a fragmented volcanic rock. The last major eruption, dated to 1550, is known only from geological evidence with no historical accounts. Since then, the volcano had shown only occasional fumarolic activity. Located about 8 miles, 13 kilometers, south of Lake Kronotsky, Krasheninikov sits in a zone of high geothermal activity. Fumaroles, gas emissions from volcanic vents, were observed at the northern cone in past decades, indicating that the volcano was never entirely dormant. These subtle signs pointed to an underlying magmatic system. A 2007 quake of magnitude 5.0, with an epicenter directly beneath the volcano, had already raised concerns about possible reactivation. That tremor struck 70 miles, 113 kilometers, deep and didn't cause an eruption. But the 2025 quake, far shallower and stronger, seems to have pushed the volcanic system beyond its breaking point. Krasheninikov's structure suggests it is capable of explosive eruptions. Such events can eject vast amounts of ash and gas, potentially impacting not only the local area, but even global climate, if emissions reach the stratosphere. For now, the current eruption is considered moderate, but scientists are watching for signs of escalation. Studying Krasheninikov is vital to understanding how dormant volcanoes may awaken. Its geological past and recent reactivation offer valuable insight into the dynamics of the Ring of Fire, where tectonic plate interactions sculpt landscapes and unleash powerful disasters. Monitoring efforts have intensified since the July 30th eruption. Kamchatka's branch of the Russian Academy of Sciences Geophysical Service has installed cameras and seismic sensors around the volcano to track activity in real time, like ash emissions or new lava flows. The ash plume, reaching three to four miles, five to six kilometers high, prompted a red aviation warning, the highest level of alert. Volcanic ash can damage aircraft engines and obscure visibility, so constant monitoring is essential for flight safety. So far, no major flight disruptions have been reported, but authorities remain on high alert. Scientists are analyzing ash and gas samples to understand the magma's composition. This data will help determine whether this eruption signals the start of a longer eruptive period, or is merely an isolated event. The volcano's history suggests it could stay active for months or even years, as is common with other Kamchatka volcanoes. Local communities, though used to seismic activity, face serious challenges. Authorities are advising residents to avoid areas near the volcano and prepare for possible evacuations. Schools and public buildings in nearby towns are being inspected for structural integrity against aftershocks. This event also highlights the importance of international collaboration in natural disaster response. Agencies like the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center in the U.S. Geological Survey are sharing data with Russian scientists to forecast potential impacts. Such cooperation is vital for risk mitigation in remote regions like Kamchatka. Hmm, looking ahead, Krasheninikov will become a natural laboratory for studying the link between earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. With the likelihood of aftershocks and further eruptions, Kamchatka will remain a key focus for scientists. This event underscores the need for investing in monitoring technology and educating communities in high-risk zones. 